Thank you for joining us for this study series on Basic Bible Doctrines. I'm Pastor John Harris, and I look forward to opening the Scriptures with you. Get your Bible, get your notebook, let's go. This, okay, that's before the law, and then you'll see that there's, I guess I could, yeah, so I had the, I, this is sort of the sheet. So I had in the Moses, the law, uh, uh, and then there's grace, that's where we're at today, and then the, the tribulations after us, all right? And then there's the new covenant, or the, the, the kingdom on the earth, which is part of the new covenant, and then the new heaven and new earth. That's when it's all said and done. My correction has to do with the new heaven and new earth. Uh, when I first put it down, I'm talking about shrimp, okay? So I had, there's, you know, the new heaven and new earth. So, by the way, if you ate shrimp under the law, you sinned. You had to deal with it because you couldn't, you weren't allowed. Actually, before the law, you weren't allowed either. Uh, during the Adam and Moses part, okay? And in the garden, you wouldn't have been allowed eating shrimp. Because what was Adam told to do? What were they allowed eating? Yeah, basically, you know, tree, fruit of the tree, herbs from the ground, things like that, right? So it would, have been, it would have been sin. So they would have disobeyed God if they picked up a shrimp and ate it. I don't know why you'd want to do that. <laughs> if you just sort of randomly pick up a shrimp and look at it, like, that looks edible. No, it doesn't. Okay. Not initially, anyways, right? Okay, it's a bug. That's what it is, right? Okay, anyways. <laughs> but uh, anyways... On the new heaven, new earth, just, I mean, you, you can take a look at the sheet. I went over it last time. Uh, but on the last one there, on the eight shrimp, in the new heaven, new earth, the curse has been lifted. The bondage of corruption is gone, so there is no more death. So you're not going to kill an animal to eat it. All right? It's just not, so you're going to go back to like it was under the garden, I think, anyways. Probably. So, so you're not going to eat shrimp, okay? Unless they're, like, made of tofu, okay? <laughs> They'll probably taste really good, though. Yeah. I mean, it's perfect, right? So. Well, is there anything to be said though in our spiritual bodies that we eat? Yeah, that's well. I, mean, I would think you wouldn't. Angels eat. They there's ma- they have a- manna. It was called angels' food. So you'll still eat, like I guess, right? Okay. Um, your spiritual body can. The Lord Jesus Christ had a resurrection body. He ate. He drank. Right. And so. Yeah, that's part of it. Yeah, it's, it's, it's eating heaven. <laughs> so, well, we're not necessarily taking. We're not taking part in that particular supper, but uh, it's it, yeah, they do eat. Yeah. So, but that's also uh, in the no, no. That is, that is yeah. Second, that is when Christ comes, or when God the Father comes down. There's a so yeah. All right. Okay. Yes, but yes, there is eating and food you can eat. I mean, especially on the earth you can, but even for the body of Christ, angels can eat. So I think we do too. So. All right, okay, so uh, that was my modification to that. So, so this is what these are, these are these, uh, that's what I, I put together. This is in the book I'm working on. I just pulled that out for a chart on dispensational, or dispensational character of the Word of God. Let me um, go to the next one. So what we did, we went through that a little bit the last time, right? Did we get through the whole thing? I think we did, right? Did I get through that, right? All right. So there's other ways to look at, so like, the, you know, like so we've, we've been looking at the Word of God, that's what we're looking at, right? And honestly, we're going to finish this topic and move on to other stuff and move much faster, but I wanted to, t- you know, I just want to make sure, without the Word of God as a foundation, understanding the Word of God, the rest of this is sort of a mood issue. I mean, you, I mean, it doesn't, you, you know, you've got to have a, an authority, and the Word of God is the authority, and you need to understand how the authority is speaking to you, and, and so the Word of God needs to be rightly divided. Okay, we're told to rightly divide the word of truth, study to show the self to prove unto God, a workman that he thought be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth means to cut it straight. And, you know, there's, um, you can cut it a couple of different ways, okay? And, and so um, there are attempts to cut the Bible. Like, for instance, if I take my Bible up right now, there's an attempt to cut your Bible. There's a, begin, there's a first part, which is called, okay? And then there's a second part called, so there was a, you know, there's an awareness that there's some differences there, right? Okay, that's one way. It's just not the best way, right? Because the Old Testament contains 2,000 years of history that's not Old Testament. Okay, from Adam to Moses is not Old Testament. The Old Testament is the Old Covenant. The Old Covenant is the law, and the law didn't come about until Exodus 24, all right? And so until that period of time, okay, when they accepted that, that's when the law became. So that's not a good, that's not a good division. It's not enough, right? It's not the best division, right? It's a good division. I mean, you can tell that. And, and so, you know, you understand that, hey, the New Testament's probably for us, right? P- right? Except the problem is not all the New Testament is for us, all right? Because the first, the Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are still Old Testament, okay? 
because the New Testament, according to the book of Hebrews, couldn't begin till the death of the testator, which is the Lord Jesus Christ. So from Matthew 1 to Matthew 24, 12, 26-ish, somewhere in there, you don't, you know, that's, that's before the cross, right? Okay, Luke, almost to the end of the Luke, almost to the end of John, almost to the end of, of uh, Mark. Until you get there, you're still Old Testament, right? The problem is, is what, you know, when's the New Testament begin? Well, the New Testament begins when the, what is the New Covenant. Well, the New Covenant doesn't begin or is in full play until Israel's in the land and the kingdom is set up, all right? So the New Covenant is when Christ comes back and sets up his kingdom. Is that there yet? No. Okay. So, so we're not in the New Covenant yet, all right? So the New Testament... It's, there's a little further. And where, where is that? You know, grace is not in the new covenant. Okay? Uh, we are partakers of, of, of some spiritual blessings that are part of that, the Apostle Paul says, but we're something that's different. Right? So, anyways, there's other ways to cut it. Right? Uh, and uh, we looked at Second Peter. P- uh, Peter uh, says um, you know, to uh, his, you know, the folks he's writing to there that uh, you know, if you want to understand what's happening today, you go talk to Paul, okay, and you read about him in his epistles, Okay, and then he talks about Paul's epistles and the other epistles. Okay, that's, that's a cut, right? There's Paul's epistles and, and, and other epistles. We looked in um, Romans 16. We, we weren't here last week, right? So that's why I'm doing this, right? We looked in Romans 16. Romans 16, Paul says that if you want to be established, well, just look there. Let's go there right now. Go to Romans 16, and then we're going to kick off from here. Romans 16, if, if you want to be established today, if you would like to you know, have firm footing and, and, and how to handle life today, okay, uh, to be established, here's what you need to do. Rom- Romans 16, verse 25. <laughs> now to him, talk to God, right? Now to God that is power to establish you. So you're gonna, you're, here's, here's how the power to establish you. Ac- according to what? Well, before, uh, this, we, gotta go, we didn't read the first part there. According to my gospel. All right, so you need, you need the gospel. You need... <laughs> You need, to, you need to be saved. You need to be a child of God. You can't be established unless you're a child of God, according to my gospel. By the way, it's my gospel because there's other gospels. Okay? The gospel of the kingdom is not my gospel. That's, that's the gospel of the kingdom. That's the good news of this, the earthly kingdom. But that's not to you. All right? That's not your gospel. Your gospel is Christ died for your sins and buried and rose again. All right? That's your gospel. And you're going you're to go to heaven, right? So anyways, according to my gospel, and the preaching of Jesus Christ, right? That's, that's important, right? But it tells you how. According to what? The revelation of the mystery, which was kept secret since the world began. All right? So, so there's so foundations of the gospel, and then you lay on top of that the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery. And then... By the way, the world began, but now it's made manifest. So God kept it secret, but now it's made manifest. And then there's another level, and then the rest of the Bible, and by the scriptures of the prophets, right? So if you want to be established, you start at the core, all right, and work your way out. So get saved, know Christ, okay? Then understand Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery, because there's also a preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of prophecy, right? Okay, prophecy talks about the Lord Jesus Christ, right? And so that's what Peter says, and we're going to go there in a second. But anyways, that's the next level. So all the Bible's for us, right? Okay, it's all important. It's all God's word. It all speaks to you. It all can change you because it's God's word. But only part of it is directly to you. It's your private personal mail. Go to Acts chapter 3. Acts chapter 3. Preaching of Jesus Christ according to the Revelation of Mystery, which was kept secret since the beginning of the world, right? That's the, revela- that's the mystery. God kept it secret since the beginning of the world. Peter at Pentecost, or the next day, or maybe that evening, all right, uh, in Acts chapter 3, verse 19, he says to uh, the folks he's preaching to, which are ye men of Israel, all right, verse 12, and when Peter saw it, he answered unto the people, what? Ye men of Israel. So he's talking to Israel, okay? Talks about their God, you know, God of Abraham, Isaac, things. They get down to verse 19. He says to them, um, Repent ye therefore and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out. When the times of refreshing shall come from what? The presence of the Lord. Their sins are going to be blotted out when, when, you know, when the times are refreshing, when things are all made new, okay? 
And it comes when the presence of the Lord occurs. That's what is coming. And he shall send, here you explain it, and he shall send, verse 20, Jesus Christ, which before was preached unto you, whom the heavens must receive until the times of restitution of all things. So he's going to be in the heavens until the times of, of the, until the, you know, he's going to be in heaven until the times of restitution of all things. When he's going to reinstitute, bring into play the things that ought to be, okay, Okay, which God has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets, what? Since the world began, right? Peter says, I'm talking to you about Jesus Christ coming back, setting up his kingdom, which all the prophets have talked about since the beginning of the world. Paul said, you get established by the preaching of Jesus Christ according to Revelation of Mystery, which was kept secret since the world began. That's two bodies of truth. That's truth that has been spoken and truth that has been kept secret, right? That's two things. Paul calls what was kept secret the mystery, something that was a secret and you should know about because it's not revealed, right? And then there's prophecy, which the prophets have spoken about. Well, is verse 24, it says it this way. Yea, and all the prophets from Samuel and those that follow after, as many as have spoken, have what? Likewise foretold of these days. And Paul will tell you that this age that you're sitting in right here was not spoken about. Okay? It's a mystery. It was kept secret. Right? It was something that God did not reveal until now. What's, the mystery, what's grace deal with? It's called the body of Christ. That's who you are. Right? That's, we, are, we are in the dispensation, that is, God has changed how he's dealt with man through time, and today we live in grace, okay? We stand in grace. We're saved by grace, right? Um, it, is, it is the operational parameters of the moment, right? It will not be the operational parameters during the tribulation, okay? Okay? It's a time of, of not grace. doesn't mean there's not grace there, but it's not a time of that. When Christ comes back at the end of the tribulation to set up his kingdom, it's not a time of grace. It's a time of judgment. God is coming to make war, right? Um, God has declared peace today. That's what, you know, Romans 5 says that. We have peace with God, right? As we have the ministry of reconciliation. It means that God has taken the world and moved us from a position of being enemies to being, you can be one of God's children now, right? You just have to believe what Christ has done for you. And you're moved from a position of being an enemy to that. And God has is declared peace today, right? It's like a, it's a, it's a, it's an opportunity to cross the, the, the battle lines and join the good side, right? Okay. As it says in uh, Paul, or God's word says that we have been delivered from the power of darkness, right? And translated into the kingdom of his dear son. You know, we're called ambassadors for Christ. Where does an ambassador serve? Where I'm saying, uh, that was a chorus that I didn't hear. So. We, you're, you're somewhere else, right? You're in a foreign land, right? You're standing. So an ambassador is in a foreign land. Where's your home? Heaven. heaven. Our conversation is heaven. What we call home, Philippians 3.20. That's where our home's at. So we are here as an ambassador, all right, in a foreign land, okay, to call people to join us, right, to rescue them, okay, and, and the problem is we're actually in a situation that's a little dangerous because we're behind enemy lines because that's, what's, that's why the world's the way it is, right? It's, 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 the, the world doesn't like you. The Lord Jesus Christ said the world will hate you, right? He says that to his followers. You know, yea, all of God, they shall suffer persecution. That is the truth for today. That's for us, right? We are... So we're up behind enemy lines and we're, you know, we're giving the gospel. We're rescuing people, right? But God's going to call the ambassadors home. What happens when you declare war? They call the ambassadors home, right? Okay, that's it. They're brought back. We, the embassy closes, right? You know, they come back and then because then, things got so bad, but God's going to declare war. What's the event that calls the ambassadors home? What do we call it? The rapture, right? Okay. That's the end of this age. And then God declares war. Okay? That's, it's, it's not a time of peace. It's not a time of grace. What people, I mean, there's, a, there's a false perception of the Lord Jesus Christ. He is not, I mean, he is, he is love. God is love. 
but he's also just. All right? He is righteous. He is holy. Okay? Okay, he is still the God that says, take your shoes off, Moses. All right? You know, you're in, you're in holy ground. We are his children. All right? So you can run into the throne room of God and not get stabbed with a spear and taken out because you're his son, you're his child, all right? Because you're part of the family, all right? That's the relationship, he's our head, right? That, that we have with Christ, all right? So anyway, so division, a better division of scripture is not Old Testament, New Testament. A better de de uh, description of scripture would be prophecy and mystery because that's the two aspects of it, okay? Another division that works real well is heaven and earth, right? Because that has to do with purpose. God has a purpose for the heavens and the earth. Ephesians 1, 9, 10, and 11, well, 9 and 10, says that God revealed to us, well, I'm, I'm there, are you there? Go to Ephesians 1. My Bible just happens to be sitting here at it, right? Ephesians 1, verse 9 Having made known unto us, Ephesians 1, verse 9, having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he hath purposed himself. That is, God has now made known to us the secret purpose of his will, that like something is kept secret about his will, had not revealed before, all right? And here's what it is, that in the dispensation, there's that, you know, you know when God you know, dispenses something in a different way, this is the dispensation of the fullness of times, when it's all sort of said and done, when it's complete, when it's what it ought to be, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. Everything gathered in Christ. What did God tell Adam? What did God tell Adam? Go to Genesis chapter, I think it's one. Two. He said, well, you're going to inherit the earth. You're going to inherit the earth. Go to Genesis 1, verse 28. So up in verse 27, so God created man in his, in his own image, in the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them, verse 28. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply and what? Replenish the earth and subdue it. Bring it under subjection, okay? And then have dominion over the fowls of the air and things like that, right? He said, he said you need to bring it under subjection, right? Well, what you find is through the seed of man, right? That's the Lord Jesus Christ comes about, right? He's God, but in human flesh. God's going to gather that, that message about, about, about man and about subduing the earth, bringing it under control, implies that it's not under control. You don't subdue something that's submissive, all right? It's, it's not the way it ought to be. And so from the beginning, and that's prophecy, you get to Genesis 3.15, you have... Go through 3.15 after their sin, um, you find that Genesis 3.15, and, and God is pronouncing a judgment against the devil, in this case, or the serpent, this devil. For Genesis 3.15, and I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel, as a, a prophetic utterance about the Lord Jesus Christ, one that He's going to go to the cross. He's going to, have, he's going to bruise his heel, but he's going to crush your head. Okay? The word subdue has that meaning. It means to put the foot on the head. That is, when you subdue the enemy, you put your foot on them. You stand on them. You put, push them down. Right? That's what it means to bring you know, into subjection. That's the entomology of the word. Okay? It means to bring under subjection. Back to J Ephesians 1. From that day forward, God has shown how he's dealing with the earth, all right? It's going to be through man, okay? You find, you know, you, you, a Abraham's called out of the earth of the Chaldees, okay? He, uh, there's a separation that's put, he's given this covenant of circumcision. If you, bl if you bless Abraham, you'll be blessed, you know? If you don't bless Abraham, you won't, right? Okay, and then it passes on then to, who's Abraham's kids? Me. Well, well not, not just Ab Israel. Isaac and Ishmael, okay, okay, Isaac has a couple kids, he has Jacob and Esau, wow, we're going to have to go back and redo Genesis, okay. Jacob and Esau, okay, God, now Jacob has how many kids? Twelve kids, right, and of those twelve, is those twelve, oh yes, Trey has a, he had a daughter at least, yeah. he may have had other daughters, we don't know, but we know he had twelve boys, all right, so those twelve boys, 
Okay, they become, you know, God changes Jacob's name to Israel. Those 12 boys are now the 12 tribes of Israel, right? And there's, and there's promises made each time, okay? And through that lineage ends up being the Lord Jesus Christ, all right? And he's going to set up his kingdom. But that's, it's dealing with the earth. Everyone was promised the land, the land, the land, okay? The promised land, right? You call it the promised land because it's a promise. It's part of the covenant, all right, and, and, and God's going to do it, okay? And, you, you know, and he's going to... Anyway, so he's, God's going to bring about... And when you get to the, in the new heaven and new earth, the this many of times, the earth is fixed. It's in Christ. The, the message started on almost day one when God created man. Subdue it. It's going to end with it. Subdued, Genesis, or Ephesians 1.10... He's going to gather together one in all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. It's going to be in him. But there is nothing that's said about the heavens. From Genesis up through the Gospels, there's nothing said about how God's going to reclaim the earth or, or heavens because they are also unclean in his sight. Okay, the devil and his angels are there. All right, we know that because in Revelation 12, which is future to our day, it's actually middle of the tribulation, there's going to be a war in heaven. The devil and his angels will fight against, well, Michael and his angels will fight against the devil and his angels. All right? And the devil and his angels are going to lose their place. They're going to be cast out to the earth. And things get really bad on the earth. You think they're bad now. Okay. Okay. And by the way, in the first half of the tribulation, some people say, that's not so bad. If I told you that half the world's population dies in three and a half years, would you say that's bad? Okay. Because that's what happens in the first three and a half years of the tribulation. Okay, if you think there's a pandemic, cause a scare, wait to the tribulation. Praise the Lord, you're not going through that. God's not appointed us to wrath, but obtain salvation. We have a future tense salvation. We're going to be delivered from that because he's going to call his ambassadors home before war is declared. All right, that's what's happening. That's the, you know, anyway, so God is going to deal with the heavens as well, and that's us. It's a mystery. God kept it secret. He kept it secret because we're told in 1 Corinthians that if Christ would have, or God would have revealed somewhere in the Old Testament, the devil would have figured it out. Because, by the way, he's smarter than you and I are. Okay? He says he is, the Word of God says that he's the, he's the sum of all creation. Take the best of any, anything God ever created, put it in one being. That's, that's, that was Lucifer. Okay? Best singer, best musician, best intellect. You know, because because God created him to to lead creation and the worship, creative worship of God. You know, think about eternity. Would you want to sing? You know, our God is an awesome God forever. You got to get a little creative, right? Well, you put. I mean, it's not to say you want to, but but like you know, after the fourth billionth chorus of it, okay, you might want to do something different, right? Okay. Well, our, you know, I'm being funny, but. But, the, but Lucifer had that, 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 that wisdom to be able to do that, right? But then it became corrupted, okay? Because he was also perfect in beauty, all right? And he looked in the mirror one day and said, ooh, look at me, all right? And uh, it said basically his beauty corrupted his wisdom. He led a rebellion, all those things. But anyways, the heavens aren't fixed. They're not fixed right now. I mean, th th that's, where the, that's where Satan and his angels are at, right? And the body of Christ... Where do we call home? Where are we seated according to Ephesians chapter 2? Where is God going to bless you and show his kindness forever, ages upon ages? In heaven, right? That's where you're at. You are that fixed. You're the mystery. And that's what this verse 11 says. Back to Ephesians 1, 9, 10, 11, even if you want it somewhere else. John, verse, yes, sir. Just to differentiate, so the, that's a separate, so we have second, third heavens as the Bible talks about. So yeah, so, so he's, not in, he's not where God's at. He's not in the third heaven. He's not in paradise. He's in, when you look up in the night sky and look at the wonderful stars, that's where you're seeing it, right? He's, he's there right now in, in this universe, right? Um, where where the, those things are at. Okay, thanks, John. Ephesians 1, verse t not 10 again, that in the dispensation of fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, uh, both which are in heaven, which are on earth, even in him, right? So he's going to gather everything in Christ. So when it's all said and done, everything is in Christ. What are those things? Well, the earth, okay, through a kingdom, through what God's doing, setting up his kingdom on the earth, 
and see the body of Christ with Christ as head in the heavens. Look at verse 11 says, there's a four letter word that screams at you because there's a, there's a folks, a lot, a lot of teaching that happens today basically Mick puts the body of Christ and Israel together. Israel just became the body of Christ or the body of Christ is an extension of Israel and that we've taken their blessings. Okay, we're, we're going we're gonna to serve, we're going to be on the earth, we're going to go to the marriage supper of the Lamb, like, you know, those types of things, right? That, that thing's, the, the issue is, that's their inheritance. If I took part of your inheritance and gave it to this person over there, you might be a little annoyed, right? Okay, because that's yours, right? That's what was promised to you, and I'm just going to take it from you. Okay, but, but God says that the gifts and calling of God are out repentance. He gave you something. Is he going to give your salvation to somebody else and take it from you? No, I mean, because you are, you're, you're, you are, he gives that to you, right? It's, it's, your, it's your inheritance. Notice verse 11 says, in whom, talking about in Jesus Christ, what's the next? Also, we have obtained what? Inheritance. We also have an inheritance. Our inheritance is in the heavens, right? Is it different? Israel's not going to be upset that you took the heavens. Peter, James, and John never wanted they don't expect to stay where they're at. They're coming to stand on the earth, right? That's, that's serious. By the way, where did Job expect to stand? On the earth, right? Well, because, how did he know that? Well, do you know that's one of the oldest books of the Bible, right? Well, God must have revealed it to him, right? He says, well, because, well, they're part of God's earthly program. They're part of prophecy, all right? Okay, we're part of mystery. What God's doing. Okay. You're here in Ephesians. Let me show you another way to divide your Bible up that Apostle Paul does in a very simple way. He divides it this way. All right? This is a very simple way to think of the Scripture. A, a, bit, a broader division all right, of how, how to look at it. All right? And this is here in Ephesians 2. Um, let's uh, just glance at verse, we'll start in verse 11. Okay. So Paul uses time past, but now, and ages to come. All right? That's another way to think about how to divide it that is easier maybe than the other ones, but it's still the same. Verse 11, Wherefore remember that ye being in time past, what? Gentiles in the flesh, which are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands, that at that time... You were, this, these are the Gentiles. You were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope, and without God in the world. That was our condition, Gentiles' condition. All right? Now, you can find, I can show you a scripture or two in the Old Testament that uh, actually when Sol- Solomon was dedicating the temple, okay, he, ba- he makes this, pro- he, prays this, he prays this in his prayer. He says, Lord, if a stranger, somebody out there wants to know you, and they pray to this temple, God listened to them and answered them, right? So people could come, but they had to go through Israel, right? That was God's plan and purpose. Verse 13 says what? But now, okay, something's changed, okay? Pastor Culp did a really good message or a powerful message on this phrase, but, you know, the, the phrase but. But is a, is a word. It's like you turn the corner. You're heading this direction and boom, something changes and you're going a different direction, right? But now, in Christ Jesus, he who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ, for he is our peace, who hath made both one, so both Jews and Gentiles one, hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments, so the law has been dealt with, right? Uh, Containing ordinances for to make of himself of twain one new man, uh, so making peace, and that he might reconcile both unto God in what? One body by the Christ cross, having slain the enemy thereby. So now it's the body of Christ. It's not the law. It's something different, right? There's no difference between Jew and Gentile today. Okay, huge difference between Jew and Gentile in time past, right? Um, notice I don't have this line drawn at the cross, okay? Because it's because time past goes past the cross for a little while, right? And we'll we'll get to that in this thing here. I'll hand this out in a minute. If you back up to verse 7, or verse 6, okay, just looking at you and I, okay, so in the past, you know, Gentiles, that's who we are, we're Gentiles, right, okay, we, we were in a situation where we didn't really, you know, but uh, elsewhere, and um, talks about that Israel was very blessed, they, you know, they had the covenants, they had the promises, they had all, in fact, I think it's right, it's a little, it's the next page or two, they had all these things, okay, and we didn't, okay, that's, that was our situation. Verse 6 Okay, what about us now? So, well, 
Well, verse 5, Even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ, by grace you are saved, and hath raised us up together, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the what? <coughs> the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus, right? So we have, for the body of Christ anyways, there's a time past situation, there's now, or Gentiles, and there's the ages to come. Right now, God's doing something with the body in the ages to come. What's God going to do with the body? Well, for the ages to come, count every, you know, it's, it's more than one age, right? Okay. Ages to come. All the ages to come, he's going to show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness towards us through Jesus. And where are we seated? Where are we sitting? Verse 6. Raise, sit, raise, and hath raised up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. In the heavens, you're going to be, in the ages to come, you're going to be blessed, 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 blessed while you're there. This is an interesting flyer because it's, uh, if you only open it like this, all right, if you only open it like this, like, like two-thirds, two so close that back little panel. The last panel, close it, all right? This is what, this is what prophecy says, all right? This is sort of a picture of your Bible according to prophecy, okay? So this is the preaching of Jesus Christ according to Revelation of prophecy, all right? And you'll see, like, you know, how it begins, you move through it, okay? After the stoning of Stephen, Okay, after, uh, after that year of grace that God prayed, Jesus Christ prayed for them, all right? They had, basically, they had rejected the witness of the Holy Spirit, which, by the way, is the unpardonable sin, all right? That is, they, they as a nation, did it, not as an individual, okay? They, uh, what the, the next tick of the clock, according to Daniel, was the 70th week of Daniel. After 69 weeks... Messiah is cut off. So 69 weeks ends before the cross. All right? Okay, Messiah is cut off. And then, according to Daniel 9, there's another week. All right? And that week we call, well, it's called, the, we call, it's the 70th week. Okay? We call it the 70th week of Daniel. It's a time of Jacob's trouble. Jacob is Israel. It's, it's, it's an issue. It's, it's a refiner's fire for the nation of Israel. It's this time of wrath. Okay? This, this, uh, this time of uh, great, of tribulation. The second half of the tribulation is called the Great Tribulation by the Lord Jesus Christ. Matthew 24 leads you through it pretty clearly. By the way, if you read Matthew 24, 25, this is what you see. All right? This is what you see. However, God did something different at, after, after the cross, okay, after the stoning of Stephen. If you read in your Bible, what happened? You know, who's standing there holding the cloaks of everybody while they stone Stephen? Well, Saul, whose name is rather changed to Paul, right? All right? All right, so you have a little more issues, and then all of a sudden, this, this guy named Saul, you know, he's, he's after these, these believing Christians who are uh, kingdom saints, by the way, or they're going to they're going to spend eternity, and instead of bringing judgment and wrath, which is what Apostle Paul explains in chapter 9 of Romans, he says, what if God, willing to show his wrath and to make his power known, instead showed to show mercy on the vessels of mercy, fitted for destruction, okay, and then he goes, even us, all right, even us, that's Romans 9, somewhere in there, okay, okay, He's, he decides to show mercy, he brings in something he never revealed before, mystery, all right, so this is the, tr this is the picture, God, take some time, look at that, okay, uh, and, uh, and, and see what's, but basically it's like, what I have, but, it, but again, you have time passed, but now, ages to come, Time past, for, uh, on the earth anyways, time past is dealing, is prophecy, okay? Uh, ages to come on the earth is the kingdom, or setting up the kingdom and things like that. For the body of Christ in the, in the ages to come, we're in the heavens, we're serving the Lord, right? It's, that's where we're at, okay? Um, all of it's to us, I mean, all of it's for us, any part of it's to us, okay? And anyway, so it's a neat, it's a good picture, all right? And I've seen this, a, a number of folks have put something like this together, but this one's pretty well put out really nicely, all right? Any questions before I battle something else here real quick? Any, but take your time to look at that, all right? Anyways, so, okay, so the professing church, okay, uh, out, like, that's, uh, out there in the world, uh, basically they, they believe that the Old Testament began in Genesis 1. It did not, all right? I've already said it, all right? Uh, they believe the New Testament begins with Matthew 1. It does not, all right? Uh, they also believe that the body of Christ believe, begins at Acts 2, and it does not, okay? Acts, and Pentecost is actually a Jewish feast day, okay? Uh, and, or they believe that 
you as a member of the body of Christ, or we are in the new covenant, right? That's New Testament, okay? And we are not, okay? So I'm going to talk about those next time, all right, with you, all right? So if I piqued your interest, come on out, right? The Old Testament didn't begin to act or to Exodus 24, okay? Uh, that was the law. The New Testament couldn't begin until Matthew 27, the death of Christ, all right? So it can be part of that. Um, it's awaiting full, uh, uh, still fulfillment. Uh, just let me sh- just show you what the new covenant is. Go to Jeremiah 31. If you were in my uh, Hebrew study, you would have, uh, we, we were in there a lot. It's just Jeremiah, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, they're the, they're the major prophets. It's called major because the, their books are bigger. Jeremiah 31. And then Ezekiel 36, if you want to compare it. Book of Hebrews also talks about it. But Jeremiah 31, it's a new covenant. It's a new promise. You know, the difference between the Old Covenant and the New Covenant is the Old Covenant was an if, condi- like a conditional covenant. If you do this, then I'll do this. If you, do, you, know, if you obey, blessing, blessing, blessing. Right? If you disobey, curse, curse, curse. The New Covenant is not conditional. Right? It's unconditional. It's, it's, not, it's not based upon if they do something or you do something. That's why we're saved by grace, right? Okay. And so it sounds like stuff we're dealing with because we're part of the spiritual blessings, but we don't, it's not to us. Verse 31. Behold the day by Jeremiah. Jeremiah 31, 31. Oh, sorry, I didn't tell you. Jeremiah 31, 31. Okay. Uh, Behold the days come, okay, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with what? The house of Israel and what? The house of Judah. The nation is split, by the way. Israel is the top ten tribes. Judah is the two, two bottom tribes. Right? Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant, what? They break. Although I was a husband unto them, saith the Lord. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. Are you Israel? That's why many folks take the body of Christ today and say, oh, we're just spiritual Israel. We become because they, want to, they, want, they, they try to read that back here, right? You're not Israel, right? You're the body of Christ. But this shall be the covenant that I make with the house of Israel. After those days, saith the Lord, after those days. What are, what are those days? Well, those days are that tribulation, okay? After he you know, sets up his kingdom, right? They say to the Lord, I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts and will be their God and they shall be my people. Israel will be God's people again, all right? Okay? And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall what? All know me, from the least of them unto the greatest of them, saith the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity, I remember their sin no more. Thus saith the Lord, which giveth the sun by light by day, words by night. He says, the Lord of hosts is the name. God's going to do it, all right? Okay? And, and, and go to Ezekiel 30, or, uh, 20, 26. 26, yeah, Ezekiel 26. That's actually Ezekiel 36. 36 and 37 have a lot. And we'll finish with this. I will talk really loud. Ezekiel 36. And Ezekiel 37. So it's Ezekiel 36, 26. All right. So that's a, actually you can start the whole way up in verse 16. But, but the, and anyways, the reason God does this is because, by the way, he's the one who put them, you know, he's the one that scattered them. They didn't obey the first covenant. He scattered them. He, he, you know, they were sick and all those things like that. Verse 22 says it this way. Therefore say unto the house of Israel, thus saith the Lord God, I do not this for your sakes, O house of Israel, but for mine holy name's sake, which you have profaned among the heathen, whether you went. And I will sanctify my great name, which was profaned among the heathen, which you have profaned in the midst of them. And the heathen shall know that I am the Lord, saith the Lord God, when I shall be sanctified in you, Israel, okay, before their eyes. Okay, down to verse, uh, verse 12, oh, keep going. For I will take you from among the heathen, gather you all the countries, and bring you, do, bring you into the, your own land. Part of the new covenant is going to bring them back into the land, right? Then I will sprinkle clean water upon you, and you shall be clean from all your filthiness, from all your idols, and I will cleanse you. This stuff, some of the stuff began, like the spiritual part began at Pentecost for them. A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you, and I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh. I put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes, and you shall keep my judgments and do them. And you shall dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers, and you shall be my people, and I will be your God, and I will also save you from all your uncleanness. I will call you for the uh, call for the corn, increase it, and lay no famine upon you. 
He's, there, it's a series of physical and spiritual blessings. Their spirit's going to be with them, and they're going to be righteous, their sin's going to be taken care of, but they're going to be in the land, and the land's going to blossom as a rose, and it's going to be wonderful and amazing and beautiful, right? That's Israel's promise. That's the new covenant. It's to them, okay? The Apostle Paul tells us that we, are, we have been made partakers of the spiritual blessings of the new covenant. We're not partakers of the new covenant, we're partakers of something else. We've been grafted in. If you're interested in that, that's this little guy right here. Oh, not that one. It's this one. You've been grafted in. That's still not the right one. It's one of these ones here. It's, you've been grafted in amongst them. He, he talks about it. He basically says, Christ is the spiritual root. Okay? And today, some of those branches have been broken off. Israel has been blinded for a season. And we, the body of Christ, have been grafted in to that spirit, that spirit, that root, that spiritual fatness, which is Christ and the Holy Spirit. They were in Christ. The believers, believers in the kingdom are in Christ. Okay? You're in Christ, but you are also the body of Christ, which is a different agency. They are Israel, right? Now, today, 2,000 years past, like when Paul was saying this, there were Peter, James, and John were alive, and those folks, right? They were in Christ. So he's saying, hey, guys, let me explain what's going on. All right, but today they're all dead. Okay, and they're, you know, they're going to be resurrected. Okay, today it's just the body of Christ in that fatness, right, with those blessings, right. Let's uh, let's pray. I got a little thing to say, and then we'll go on to God's world. Word, ne not God's God's world. Yeah, God's word next time. Let's pray. Father God, thank you for today. Thank you for your blessings. Thank you for your love and your grace. Father, we look forward to your, what you're going to do today in Christ Jesus' name. We pray. Amen. Thank you for being with us today. I hope you enjoyed the Word of God uh, being shared. I am Pastor John Harris from the Altoona Bible Church. This is a recording from my Sunday school class that meets every Sunday at uh, 9.30 in the morning. We'd love you to come out and check things out live if you wish. You can check us out at www.altoonabible.org if you want to see what Altoona Bible Church stands for, the type of ministry we have. I know that you'll be blessed. Looking forward to seeing you.